Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So today's video is going to be uh, another endo video, as is for the rest of this week. But today's video is going to be what to do if you think you have endo, slash, you know, how to recognize if you think you might have endometriosis. So let's go through some of the symptoms and the questions that you might have um, to help see if you may need to be diagnosed or checked out by a professional. Obviously, I am not a professional. If you are concerned about anything about your cycle, especially with pain and infertility, please so see a specialist, get referred by your GP or your doctor to a gynecologist, especially one who is proficient and experienced with endo. But that I'll get to those tips in a minute. So talking about symptoms. So you think you might have endo um, and you're not really 100% sure. So let's go through. So symptoms unexplained and very painful cramps during or between cycles that is excruciating so pain that is not just this is painful but i'm doing okay i'm talking pain that is this is debilitating this is causing effects on your life um you are not able to do your day-to-day -day things and just pain pain relief you know your panadol or just your paracetamol is not taking care of it and if it's coming at different points in your cycle, for me, I used to get pain mid-cycle and during my cycle. So around day 13, 14, 15 of my cycle and actually during my actual period itself. Um, and especially that mid-cycle pain, that was actually worse for me. Um, in fact, there were times when I ended up in hospital because I was in such excruciating pain. Heavy or irregular bleeding with or without clots for me clots were a big factor um, however that just depends on cycle um, but if you're getting excessively heavy like soaking through tampons or pads um, excessive bleeding or even very irregular bleeding where you have no regularity to your bleeding or cycle maybe looking starting to look at why that's happening excessive fatigue or nausea between or around the time of your cycle. I used to get this, like I said, mid-cycle. A lot of my symptoms were mid-cycle. So it doesn't necessarily have to be during your period because obviously many people get tired during that time. But I used to get to the point of vomiting a lot and nausea and just excessive needing to sleep during that time. And if that is, if that is something that sounds familiar to you, that is not normal and that needs to be looked at. Infertility, if you have been trying to conceive for more than 12 months, um, or if you have been trying to conceive for more than 6 months, I think as if you're over 30, um, it might be time to look at why you're not conceiving. Um, it, The rule is that a young, healthy couple should conceive within 12 months. Um, I went and saw my doctor after about 10 or 11 months of not being able to conceive and irregular cycles. Um, and obviously I had a lot of these other symptoms and they all came to tuition and I got my diagnosis. I will be coming back to that. Um, very long or very short cycles. My cycles were 21 days, which is very, very short. I think anything under 25 or 27 is considered a short cycle. Um, or I'm talking anything over 32, 34 days. So I also had cycles that were in their 60s or 50s or 40s. Again, that is not normal. Your body should not be taking that long. Um, if you have a regular cycle, you know, you need to be looking at why. So now we've gone through the symptoms, the, the major symptoms, um, and you've said yes to one, two, all of them. So I'm going to go through a little list of what options you should have or what you should maybe do um, to help you. So the first one is make an appointment to see your doctor and get referred to a gyno specialist who is specifically specializes in endo if you can. Um, my GP, my general doctor, she actually referred me to a specialist who he's, he's, a, he's an OBGYN, but he is very well known in the endometriosis world and he's very well practiced in that trying to see someone who has experience in endometriosis is crucial because you want somebody who's going to recognize your symptoms and not just pass them off following on with that do not let doctors dismiss you if you know that your pain is excessive if you know that it is excruciating and it is affecting your quality of life 
you don't deserve that and you deserve to have it looked at too. Make sure and to figure out why so that it can be treated and managed so that you can live the best life. Try and make a plan for when you have your endo episodes. Either you're on the wait list to see a doctor, you have a little while to see a doctor, you've seen your doctor and you're waiting for treatment options, whatever it is. Obviously speaking to your regular doctor about getting pain relief might be an option. Um, something stronger than your average ibuprofen or NSAIDs or um, Panadol or Paracetamol. Um, obviously speaking to someone about that, but also try and find anything that can relieve the pain, um, whether it be hot water, hot baths, hot showers, and also recruit the help of family members on days that you are expecting to have this if you know when your cycle is really bad. If you've got children, try and recruit family members to watch them for a couple of days. If you have obviously a full-time job, try and organize with your work. If you can try and work from home or if you can try and do a sort of partial load, something that's gonna help your life be a little bit better. Which is my next point, which is ask for help. It is incredibly crucial that you use the resources, you use what you can, especially your support network. You're going to need one. Which brings me to my next point, which is finding a group. So whether it be a Facebook group, a forum, any of the above, find one. Obviously, the endometriosis awareness one is the one that I'm part of. I will leave that linked in the description box of my YouTube video. Um, but if you just go on to Facebook and type endometriosis awareness, we do have a Facebook page or they have a Facebook page that you can be a part of, you can join, and you can start getting involved with other people. Talking to other people who are in your situation may help you feel a little bit better and less alone, which is my final point, and know that you are not alone. Like I said, one in 10 women have been diagnosed with endometriosis. There are many more that could be more undiagnosed, and this is not something that is going to be swept under the rug. You are not alone. There is nothing wrong with you. You just need to find out what you can do to make your life better. So I hope this video helped. If you think you may have endometriosis as your first steps as to what to do with that. Um, I hope you guys have a wonderful day. If you are on my new YouTube channel, please don't forget to click that subscribe button. Um, so you can come back for more YouTube videos and also check back tomorrow because there will be another endo video up as promised. Have a great day and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye.